Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you are unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's okay. We do record the show and it is um, available in our archives. And I'll show you later where you can access the archive shows. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone who you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, Nebraska is the um, state library agency for libraries in Nebraska, um, similar to your state library in your states, um, and that is for all types of libraries. Uh, so you will find topics on our show for um, all types of libraries as well, public, K-12, academics, um, corrections, museums, archives, anything and everything. Really our only criteria is that it is something um, to do with libraries in any way, shape, or form. So we have book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Uh, it just runs the gamut. Um, we do bring in um, guest speakers from across Nebraska and actually across the country sometimes. Um, and we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us. And this morning we have a mixture of that. Um, and what I'm going to do is here, uh, I'm going to start, there we go. Um, today we're going to be talking about book clubs during the pandemic, of course, and uh, Lisa Kelly is with us here. She is here from the Nebraska Library Commission from our reference department. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Um, and I'm just going to hand over to you to um, start and introduce everyone who you've gathered together with you today to talk about um, book clubs and how we, uh, how you guys all handle it during this past year. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Kay and Dana and Chuck for joining me today. I appreciate your willingness. I fear you're never going to share with me how your book club is going because that's why you got picked. <laughs> but please keep telling me because the reason I ask you all to join us is because your emails are the things that keep me going. How, how it went, what you did, and how you got through it. So I appreciate that and don't let this session stop you from telling me because I, it's the lifeblood of how I get through taping books and mending and cataloging them. So um, just a brief introduction about our service, then I'll let you introduce yourselves and we'll get on with the conversation. Um, the Nebraska Library Commission started book clubs in 2006, book club collection. We have over 1,900 titles in our collection. They are uh, available to those who serve as librarians in the state or media specialists. So it could be school or publics, and um, we have them down to grade three reading level. We've tried to make it a very eclectic and broad scope in our collection. Uh, we have highlighted special collections like Nebraska Authors and the 150 list that we used to celebrate the sesquicentennial a few years ago. And holidays, everyone wants to read a holiday book in December, although it makes us, we don't seem to have enough titles. Say, not that's one of our busiest, most popular ones that nobody can ever get a hold of. It we try to keep buying more holiday titles. <laughs> There's no standard checkout like some. It's reliant on when you're going to meet, when you're going to hand them out. A lot of book clubs meet monthly. Some meet every other month. So that's why that form is helpful for you to fill out. And I'm speaking to those of you who've used the collection. Um, you'll know how that works. And we do about 1,500 items a month circulating. We circulate about 1,500 items from our book club collection a month. I don't know how that compares with the rest of you all for your CERC, but for me, it makes me run my legs off, so it's all good. Um, I would well, like to know our collection is growing all the time. Every time we've talked about when you're doing book clubs, um, that number keeps going up, the number of titles in the collection and how many are going yeah. out. And I must say, we receive gifts from people like Kay. She's so kind. She just sent us the latest um, Eric Larson book, and it's already gone out again. So um, when you donate to our <laughs> when you donate to our book club collection, they will be used. Um, uh, Carney has given us when they read their collection. They give us several. Um, her name just left me. 
Anyway, I want you all, I'm going to start with Kay and then Dana and then Chuck. I want you to introduce yourselves and um, tell me, uh, when you introduce yourself, tell me a little bit about your book club. You know, how many people are in it? How did it come together? So um, give us your name, rank, and then your book club statistics, uh, demographic, if you would. Kay, let's start with you. Sure. My name is Kay Schmid, and I'm the director of the Horesca Public Library in David City. And we have had our book club since 2007. We have between eight and 10 mem members that attend regularly. Um, the average age is between 40 and 85. So we have a, a variety of people. We um, do not serve refreshments, so that's kind of different than other people. And we have reviewed over 200 books in the period of time since we started. Oh my God. You meet monthly then, Kay. We meet monthly for a while. We had two book clubs, um, noon and evening, but we've kind of, because of the pandemic, we've kind of um, consolidated into one. So and Kay, is, what's men and women or just women in your club? So we have all women, but we do have what we call our satellite members who are the husbands who actually read the books a lot of times with their wives and share their comments through their wives. So, <laughs> so every once in a while we have a man come pretty much uh, when the title interests them, but otherwise it's mostly women. So. Okay, thank you. Dana, tell us about yourself and your group. Hi, I'm Dana Still. I'm from the Hastings Public Library. I'm a library assistant. Um, our group has been together since, I believe, before 1995. Um, it's mostly women. We have a morning and an evening book club. And... Um, are they regular members or sort of come and go? How does that work, Dana? No, it's a it's a pretty set uh -huh. member base. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. And next to me, I have Chuck from Hebron Secrets Library. Um, tell us about your group. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, as she mentioned, uh, I'm Chuck Witcher. I'm the director of the Hebron Secrets Library. Um, our book club started when I became the director in Hebron. So we have been meeting since March of 2018. Uh, so far, we have read 36 books. We meet on a monthly basis. We meet the last Tuesday of every month. Our club, uh, because of people working, we always meet in the evening. Sometimes we have refreshments and sometimes we don't. It just all depends. Like last month, I brought cookies. But we don't always do that because uh, technically the library has a rule that says no eating. But since I'm the director, I overruled that. And we sometimes eat, have brownies or cookies, which everyone seems to love. As far as our group, we usually have about nine people there. We have a mixture of both men and women. And uh, our club, our book club usually meets for an hour, sometimes an hour and 15 minutes. Um, we usually have the same people that come occasionally. Uh, a husband will come, but usually it's the same people. Okay. So last year, last March, the pandemic shut up, shut things down, and I spent and my colleague and I calling librarians around the state. Are you still meeting? Are you still meeting? Do you still want your book clubs? Um, so I want uh, Kay to start with you. Um, what sort of decisions were you making when the pandemic hit for your book club to continue? Did you stop for a little bit? Think back to last March and tell me what your process was and how you got to where you are a year later. So we closed in mid-March, like most of us, everybody did. And um, our next discussion would have been the end of March. We always meet the last Monday of the month. And so I asked the group what they wanted to do and uh, they didn't feel comfortable meeting. So I sent the questions that we always discuss out and then they provided the answers back to me that they would have shared in the group. And so then I shared those with everyone. 
Then in April, the book that we were going to discuss, we did discuss, was A Gentleman in Moscow, which is about a man who is trapped in a hotel. Um, it is being held, yes, so it is in a hotel. And so I asked them what they wanted to do, and they really wanted to meet. So I talked to the board, and we um, asked people for TV trays. And so we have a big community room and everybody wore masks and we had more than six feet between us and those who wanted to attend came. And I think it was really great for their mental health just to be able to, to get out. So, so that's what we did. And you've been meeting that way currently. That's been your current strategy, right? The only month we didn't meet was March. The only <laughs> month we didn't meet was March. And the library was closed, but we... Um, we did have the meeting room open for for this group of people, and they they wanted to meet. So, okay, Dana, how about you? Starting in March, what sorts of decisions and accommodations did you make for your book club? It was one of those things we were like, oh gosh, what are we going to do? Um, so we quickly the morning and the after and the evening book club got together and we decided we would just do Facebook Live. And so the two of us were on screen and we were discussing the books, our likes, dislikes, and we've kind of gone with that ever since. We have added more staff, so there's uh, five of us that get together and discuss the book. We're never in the same room. Mm -hmm. We all sit separately, um, but I think we're getting ready to start changing back to going back to live. Otherwise, everything has been on our Facebook Live. How has that worked for you? Have you lost members, gained members? What would you say the effect has been? What I know of is we've lost members because they moved. Oh. <laughs> we had people that moved out of state, so we lost them. Um, okay. But now those who would get on Facebook would get on and discuss it, or they would email me and tell me about you know their thoughts on the book and. We tried to keep things that they could get digitally um, when we were completely closed. So we used Hoopla a lot. Um, but now that we're kind of opening back up, we're making sure we have books available through the commission or through other libraries, and we are providing the items for them. Dana, so you provided things electronically to avoid touch contact. Was that yes. a priority? Okay. And you had enough copies through Hoopla for everyone to get. I don't think there is a limit on Hoopla. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we chose Hoopla because we didn't have to limit who, okay. how many we could give out at a time. And Kay, you were still giving out print copies. Is that correct? Right. We were still doing curbside um, book okay. pickups, so we just did it that way. Yes. Okay. And Chuck, to you, how, how did you move forward in the pandemic? What did you do with your group? Well, like has already been discussed, we closed the library in March. Um, that is, we closed the patrons, our staff still worked. Uh, people could get their books through the process. And then in June, the uh, city council approved us reopening on a limited basis. Um, when our book club first met, we met upstairs around a table, and then when COVID uh, started um, or became a problem, we moved downstairs in our downstairs meeting room. Right now, we all sit in a circle uh, apart. We wear masks. Um, and so basically, we did not meet for a couple of months because of that. And then the group decided that they missed it too much. Then they begged me to start again. And so I said, fine. So, so that's what we've done. So right now we're meeting in our basement. And that seems to work out really great. So you sit six feet apart with your masks on yes, in the basement? Yes, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we all sit in a circle, but we're through the social distance. Okay. My library requires that everyone sanitize their hands when they come in. Yeah. And that's been a part of the, of the book club as well. And you borrow from us, so I know you've been yes. using print books. Yes. Okay. We, I I talked to the group about possibly doing something online, but they you know they all wanted the print books, so that worked out really well. And I, I really yeah. appreciate your allowing us to borrow those. Oh, of course. So. But that, Dana, your group was really happy to just to move right to online. What do you credit your group to? Because 
my group didn't want to, my book group did not want to do that. Yours did. What, what, what do you credit that to? I'm, I, hmm, it's kind of hard. I think it was just the staff just made that decision. Just okay. for the safety of our, our patrons and for the staff themselves. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to make sure everyone was safe. I got that. Tell me, you've, you've touched on this a little bit that your book club member said, we can't go without meeting, but why was it important for you all, um, Kay, for your group to keep meeting? Why did you go that extra mile to make that work? Because you opened your library for the group to meet. Why was that so important for you all, Kay? Well, we, I did ask them if they wanted to do some kind of Zoom meeting instead of meeting in person, and, and they didn't. Um, didn't want to do that. So um, I just felt it was important that they there was something that was normal. Mm -hmm. And so something that they looked forward to that they could come. And, you know, some people didn't because they didn't feel comfortable, but that was an option that they had. And we worked hard to make sure it was a safe environment for them. So I just felt it was something normal that they could do together. And Dana, you had two book clubs that you moved to online. Why was that important for you all in your community? You had a very long-term book club. How does, why was that important for you all in Hastings? Well, like Kay said, we wanted to keep some normalcy. We wanted, and we figured we could probably reach more people going on the Facebook Live. So mm -hmm. not just our members, but others could get in and listen. We've even had some from out of state. Really? Yeah. That How have did I that come across this. This is so interesting and so cool. So, yeah. How did you feel about the interlopers joining in your book club? Was that a <laughs> distraction or? Uh, no, it was kind of a woohoo. <laughs> We're reaching more. I like that. Chuck, what, why was it important for your group to continue? Um, I think it was important because meeting together every month gives us a sense of community. Yeah. Gives us a chance to talk about books. Um, whenever somebody new joins our book club, I set out to them a few rules of a book club. Uh, one of the rules is that in our book club, we have absolutely confidentiality. Uh, I live in a town about 1700. So confidentiality is a very important thing. So when somebody starts, I let them know right away, whatever said in the book club is just stays here in the book club. And another thing I let them know is that everyone's comments are important, that everyone should feel to say whatever that they want to. Don't have to worry about somebody making fun of them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I really appreciate about my book club is that they're willing to share their life experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the big reasons that they missed not getting together. Mm -hmm. Because through the books, through the experiences there, they could talk about things that have happened in their own lives. Mm -hmm. And when we didn't miss, uh, when we didn't meet, they just really missed that. And I missed it too. Yeah. So. Uh, I realized uh, that. Lisa, we yeah. have a question that I think might be good to fit in here since okay. we're just talking about um, uh, the, how everybody was continuing to meet and um, someone wanted to know uh, mainly um, for, well, I guess it could be for all of you. Um, when you're doing the book clubs, did you have any other in-person programming going on as well? Um, did you have other groups being allowed to meet? Um, specifically, they're asking, my, this person says, my library is still doing um, remote Zoom book clubs and no in-person programming yet. Um, the fear was if we let our smallish book club meet and word got out that we were in person, it would trigger other groups to ask to begin meeting in person as well. Uh -huh. So um, have you, those of you that were still having your book club meet in person, have any issues with that? Um, did you do any other in-person programming would be the first question. And if not, did you have any issues with people saying, well, they get to come and meet, what about our thing? Well, I can say in Hebrew that um, we currently still do not allow other groups to meet in the library. We have one group that meets on a weekly basis, but other than that, they're not allowed to meet. Um, 
Our city council has said that there can only be a maximum of 10 persons in the library at one time. So mm -hmm. the groups that were meeting there before, we just said, I'm sorry, during this time, uh, we're not going to be able to let you meet. And it really wasn't a problem. I, no one complained to me that the book club got to meet and other groups did it. Okay. So, but, you know, in a small town, everybody knew that the book club was meeting, so. Right, yeah. Hey, how about you? Did you have a hear complaints about how come my club doesn't get to meet at the library when the book club does? We did not have that issue, no. Okay. All right. And Dana, that doesn't really apply in your world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any um any other questions that have come in, Krista? No? Um yes, but we also have a comment actually, um, from uh let's see. I'm just double checking where this is. Uh, um Scrolling back up to where I had this. Yeah, um, we have someone, uh, Dina, from the Austin Public Library in Austin, Texas, um, said that their um, the Austin Public Library has a true crime book club that went online during the pandemic, and we meet they through Microsoft Teams, another one of the things you can use. We also had a few people that joined from outside Austin, and we thought it was really cool. So just like you, Dana, they said yes. <laughs> That's what's great about some of these um, program services, with Zoom or, or Facebook Live, especially. And they, if you make them public and open, and they are unlimited with attendance, people could come across them and, and join in. And um, if you're willing to moderate that and have no issues, yeah. So they had a good success with that as well in Austin. Well, that segues to what I wanted to ask about. Then Chuck brought up confidentiality. Um, now, when you're in person for Kay and Chuck, that can be a really significant thing. I want you two to comment on that, but then Dana, I want you to comment on that too, because that's a very different world of confidentiality. If it's a significant factor in your discussion, if people are sharing parts of their life. Kay, in your club, do you talk about confidentiality with, to um, help with sharing, or is that an issue in your group? I don't see that as an issue. We've um, had a lot of the same members for a long time, but we do have new people come in and I, and it is in a public facility. So I think people know that they are sharing to a group and must feel comfortable with what they share. And um, mm -hmm. we haven't had that issue, no. Okay, so in your group, has it been um, challenged or have you known they just take it that what well, they say there will stay. Uh, like I mentioned, when we have somebody new come in, I make that a point to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the stories that we talk about become very personal to people in our book club. Mm -hmm. And I've actually had people cry. And uh, our, our other people in the group have been very sympathetic, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, they share their life stories as it relates to the book. So yeah. I think um, confidentiality is just assumed and it's part of why our book club has been successful. And pretty intimate, it sounds yes, like. Yes, definitely, definitely. So Dana, in your world then, how does that translate? Or how does the what's the tone of your conversation on um, Facebook then, as opposed to in person? Do you notice differences? Nobody really got into the conversation on the online. We would get comments like, thank you so very much. Really enjoyed your discussion. They didn't actually join our discussion. Okay. I don't know if they didn't want to or, but everything has been positive. Notice that the staff don't show the openness like you do when you're in your private group. Mm -hmm. uh, they pretty much stick to the script. The questions that are being answered they don't okay yeah because when we were live we would stray because things would lead from one to another and it was like okay guys we gotta get back to the book <laughs> but, yeah. i want to ask is that a loss do you think that feels a little bit like a loss in that perspective you don't have that conversational tone anymore i miss yeah, I miss my patrons and I miss that part of it. Um, the staff, you know, we try to 
give a little bit, but it's pretty much stick to the script. Okay. It, it's so much different than the live mm -hmm. doing things in, in person. Yeah. So Dana, the difference was that you had done used it Facebook Live and everyone knew anybody could be watching this rather than just our just our group. Right. Mm. Yeah. So there I mean I don't I haven't used Facebook Live much, but I know but I know with other things like Zoom um and Microsoft Teams and things you can do um I used to call it private group, you know, online. So rather than using a public where anybody who wants to could join and anybody who wants to could just be listening in you could do um if you wanted to maintain that confidentiality and as someone actually commented the well uh, what happens in book club stays in book club if you want to keep that vibe doing something where it was a private room a private um online session with a password or lockdown or whatever would have um helped with that situation i think or pre-recording we have done some pre-recordings just because it wasn't fitting into everybody's schedule to meet on a certain oh. day every time. So mm. you know, you meet, we may have to meet at 10 a.m. to record it, but it wasn't getting shown until four o'clock that afternoon. Uh, so, right. Yeah. So then you also knew there's it's just us. Yeah. Just yeah. us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to jump ahead, Dana. I want to in my questions. I was going to ask you one of the things that you did during the pandemic that impressed me and why I wanted you to be in this conversation were your two author visits that you did. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you arrange those? And to me, that seemed a product of the pandemic that you were able to accommodate those author visits virtually, actually more simply, and that impressed me. So could you tell us about how you came to do those author visits? Well, we decided we would do Nebraska authors and we actually had four. Oh, I'm so sorry, tell me about all of them. Um, so we had uh, Chigozi Opayoma, who wrote The Fisherman. He is a UNL professor. Stephanie Grace Whitson, she did 16 Brides. Um, Melissa, and I know I'm going to say her name wrong, and I'm so sorry. Amateas Marsh, she did the Nebraska POW camps. Um, and then we just had Matt Mason, the Nebraska state poet. And then we have James Kimball coming up in June with Prairie Forge. Wow. And what we found is that all of their live discussions were getting canceled because of the pandemic. And they were like, yes, I would love to do a recorded author visit. And so we would send them questions ahead of time of what we were going to discuss. Of course, we had to read the books ahead of time, too. And it just was like a win-win situation for everybody they got to get out to the public virtually and we got to have some really good conversations with some great authors dana were you the one who set up those virtual presentations um christy did most of it she's my supervisor um but we each got to pick a different author okay and i picked Chigozi. he was so interesting how were the honorariums? What sort of fees for a group that says, mm, I'm anxious about trying that? What were they like and what did Christy negotiate to make that happen? We have been very lucky and there were no fees. Great. They were all willing to do it because of the pandemic. They were all willing to do it um, free of charge and because they could stay in their home or at their business and do it. It was just taking barely an hour out of their day. So we were very lucky. That was, that's the reason you're here, Dana. I was impressed by what you did. I mean, you've all done great things to keep your clubs going, but I think that was an added enhancement that really the pandemic kind of made possible for you. And the fact that it was at no cost to you yeah. meant that it meant a lot to the authors, I think, to be a part of your discussion. I, I think, I yeah. think so. Cool. Yeah, ask a question. Yes. Uh, right now, our book club is reading The Fisherman. How did you get him to agree to? You said it was a pre-recorded uh, questions. Um. Yeah, we sent him an email asking if he would be willing to do um, the presentation 
via Zoom. Did we do that one Zoom or Facebook? I can't remember. Um, and we sent him, we told him we would send him questions beforehand so he knew what we were going to be asking. And so we took turns asking those questions during the presentation instead of him just doing all the talking. We all communicated. So did you do that during the actual book club? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Was that a live one or was that a pre-recorded? Those were all pre-recorded because of having to fit into their schedules. Sure. Um, sometimes we were filming at six o'clock at night because mm -hmm. they wanted to wait until they were done with work or other obligations. Well, it sounds like Chuck might want his email address from you to. <laughs> yeah, I'll try and remember to send it to you. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting that you asked that question, Lisa, because I didn't, I didn't, I don't know the questions you've got set up for the thing. But earlier, um, uh, Kathy from uh, had mentioned that the State Library of Pennsylvania has regular um, author talks that we make available to all Pennsylvania residents, and it's very popular. Cool. So it's wow. kind of interesting. They mentioned that, and then you came up with this question. Said this question. I'm like, hey. <laughs> Well, this is not my favorite way to be together. The pandemic has created some different opportunities. That have well, made it, and I don't know how long State Library of Pennsylvania has been doing it. She didn't specify it's because of pandemic, but um, virtual author talks have been a thing for years, actually. Um, yeah. they've, um, they've, uh, lots of schools do it to bring in to the students so that they can um, you know, yeah. meet them. But um, there used to be a couple of websites out there that you could find that were like collections of here's all the authors that will come and speak to you. And um, as, as Dana learned, many, most of them would, are like thrilled and doing it for free. They, they love that they can um, just be able to reach out and talk to some, the, the, the whoever, if it's the students, the kids or the adults and just to, you know, face to face ish on online. So um, that's been a thing for, for a long time. But all of this is, yes, as you said, Lisa, becoming more prevalent and people becoming more um, comfortable with this type of setup. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been doing Encompass Live for over 10 years, so <laughs> virtual for us is not new, but I think people are getting a lot more used to it. Kay, have you ever had any authors offer to speak or have you invited any authors to your group? Um, we have not. We we have not done a lot of Nebraska author books, so um, we have not. But um, I ha it's it's an interesting thought. I, yeah, I might investigate. So and no two groups are the same. That's that's why I wanted to. I'm not talking about my own. I wanted you to talk about yours and how things work for yours. Um, so in oh, and Kathy just actually, actually this Catherine Pennsylvania just mentioned, which I think this is fun. So I just want to mention this um, that they did used to do them in person, but with the pandemic, they now do it virtually. So they were they did switch. They did make right. that turn. Um, they said we did, but because of this, we did one with a person in Great Britain. It was lunchtime for us and tea time for her. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to segue a little bit into just the regular workings of a book club. Uh, and ask some questions since I have all three of you to uh, answer differently. Um, are you three the selectors for your book club titles? Okay, you select for your book club, right? I do not actually. The book club itself selects. Um, we use the Nebraska Library Commission list, and because we have between, we average between eight and ten people. We we look at how many title how many copies you have of a title and that determines the list that they pick from and okay. they like to do they like to do five fiction and five nonfiction so we switch back and forth cool. so they okay. they pick the books Dana how does your club select are you the selector or do they do it no it's a, it's a group effort um, we ask the members for suggestions um, we've kept a spreadsheet since before 1998 of every book that's ever been done. So we try to not repeat books. Um, we also try to work in fiction and nonfiction. If one book is really heavy, we try and do a lighter book the next month. Um, otherwise, it can just be so overwhelming. Um, but we like to keep things diverse as well. I would strictly read nonfiction myself. So I have learned to love a lot of mystery, which I've never really enjoyed, but I'm I'm really enjoying them now. 
One of the questions that I'm frequently asked is, we need a lighter title. So Dana, offline, I need a list of your lighter titles <laughs> because you're not the only person. Many clubs feel that. And, and check how do you go about selecting for your book group? Well, uh, basically I select the books. Um, I, I've selected books all except for one month when I had an assistant say she would be in charge of it. So she selected the books that month. I tried to encourage the members to tell me some books that they would like to read, mm -hmm. but they're all willing to let me select the books. Now, when I was in a book club mm -hmm. in Stromsburg, the group selected them then, but my group, they are very happy for me to select the books. And Dana and Chuck, um, do you pick from the commissions list or do you go outside of that list? I, I always pick the commissions okay. list because you don't charge. Right. When I decide what books, I always look to see how many copies you have. And if you don't have enough copies, then we don't I don't pick the book. Okay. But I always I always pick from the commission because like I said, it's free service. And some book clubs are willing, the members are willing to pay for the books, but mine are quite happy to have them for free. Dana, do you limit your list to our collection or you go outside of that list? We go outside as well. We use the commission list and mm -hmm. then we also have book sets of our own. Right. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm thinking we've got around 20 titles mm -hmm. on ours and we try to rotate them out every couple of years. Um, our director belongs to a book club um, and so we will use a lot of their titles too. And we try to use other book clubs' titles. Try and we'll interlibrary loan for them. So I want to go to title selection. Kay, you mentioned reading a gentleman in Moscow during the pandemic, which is the quintessential to me. Perfect. Yes. Read. Um, I bet that really was a great discussion. I think I remember you telling me it was it was a great discussion. It was uh, a great discussion. We could re relate to the character for sure. Yeah. My question is, were there titles that you nixed because of the pandemic? Was there a title that you thought, you know, any other time, maybe, but was there anything that you vetoed because of this pandemic circumstance we're living under, or was everything still good to go? Um, our, our list remained the same. We had picked the books in December, and they remained the same. Dana, was that true for you as well, or...? Yeah. We didn't make any changes. We did add one that was about grieving, um, just for discussion to help people. You know, it's okay to have these feelings, and to, uh, here's a book that will help you work through them. Did you have any special guests attend that book club? That sounds like a really worthwhile topic. No, we did not. Um, okay. But the staff really enjoyed the discussions. We all got into it pretty good. I imagine. So much grief during the pandemic from big to small things. Chuck, did you alter your title selection at all? Uh, I think I tried to have books that were not really heavy. <laughs> um, one of the books that I think that they really enjoyed was a book called The Boob Girls. <laughs> and that is a very, I found it to be a very funny, uh, funny book. Mm -hmm. And I think. Uh, because of what was happening, that the people in the book club really appreciated having lighter books. Yeah. So, so you that did, has, you did. I, I tried to have lighter books during the pandemic. Okay. So we did have a book in, in December called Christmas on the Great Plains, and that was a little bit heavier, but even so, we, we did manage to get through it. You prevailed. Yes. Um, uh, Chuck, can you, the title of that one, was that Boot Girls? Someone's asking. Yeah, Boot Girls. It's actually a series that takes place uh, here in Nebraska. Uh, <laughs> and the, what the Boot Girls stands for is Burned Out Old Broads. It's, it's an a, acronym. Yes, it's an acronym. Ah, yeah. Boob Girls. Gotcha. Okay. It's by uh, Jay Johnson. Or, she, excuse me, Joy Johnson. She's a Nebraska author. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have a couple of the questions that popped up that I could maybe um, about this book selection. Okay. That you guys are doing. Um, so, Kay, you said something that you select in December. So, you plan out the entire year's titles, 12 months worth, all in one shot? We do. 
we do. And we do use the Library Commission's list, but we also, if they want to read something newer, then I do purchase usually twice a year the newer titles. So we do um, have newer titles as well, which is where the commission got the splendid in the vial. So yeah. So you guys all provide the books to them because this other library is saying that their members are responsible for obtaining their own books. Um, that Colorado does have a similar book club collection, um, but they don't limit to that. If there's going to be a title someone wants, people have to get it themselves. And some um, of our members are in other book clubs and they do have to provide their own books. So, so it depends on which kind, which one you're in. Yeah. Um, there's also a lot of about, does the, the person who suggested a particular title, are they in this in this book club, this one person's book club, they are responsible for leading the discussion. Is that how it works with all of yours? Or do you is, do you have like one person who's the, always the leader or does that rotate to who suggested a particular title or some other way? <laughs> I usually lead the discussion. We we have had in the past if people if a person feels very passionate about a book, if they want to lead the discussion, but most often they leave it to me and a lot of times they will take the lead in their own way, even if they're not leading the discussion, they will have um, more relevant comments, I guess. So, um, yeah. And same with us. Oops, go ahead, David. I, I usually lead the discussion. Hmm. Okay. Are you okay with, I'm Kay and Dana, are you okay always, almost always being the one to lead the discussion? Does that work well? Yeah, I, I enjoy it. And Chuck, you are the leader of your discussion too, right? You're right. I, I am definitely the leader, except for one month. But uh, basically, the group, we seem to laugh a lot in our book club. <laughs> and I, I think that's one reason why people like to get together, because yeah. we, we always look for something funny. And so by the time, some of them might come and feel a little bit depressed when they get there. But by the time they leave, they're in a much better mood. Mm -hmm. So. It works. it works yes definitely it works uh, I've, I've asked other people if they'd like to leave it but they're all willing to let me do it so that's why I like it. <laughs> and we have one last question about selecting books has anyone ever suggested uh, their self-published book for a to be read have you ever dealt with that kind of a suggestion or do you have rules about I have in mind but you all answer for you no Okay, Dana, no? No. Oh, I, just, yeah, okay. I just had that happen in my book group. And he provided uh, copies, so we're he's a self-published author, so we're reading his book for my book club. And so he so they didn't have to try and find copies themselves. He provided them all. That's nice. Yeah, he yeah. gave us all copies. We, um, my rule in my book club is the library has to have copies and they're on their own to go get from the Lincoln City Library. And or and I tell them if it's on um, Hoopla or Overdrive so that they can get it. Um, but they're on their own. You all are very kind in handing the books out, but I don't. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's many different kinds of models for that. Um, but independent of the pandemic, I wanted to ask uh, again. You all are sharing some data with me. I wanted to talk about books that particularly made a difference or sparked a really um, memorable discussion in your book club and um, Kay I just remember you talked to me about the book Philomena that your group read and you may have another one I'm, I don't want to put you on the spot but can you talk about a particular title or titles that you felt like man that that's going to stay with me for a long time or that maybe changed someone which is what I love about a book club. Uh, the book Philomena dealt with gay marriage, which um, our group is, as I said, between 45 and 85. So we have a variety of, of people with a variety of ideas about the world. And, and so that was a lively discussion. But then the amazing thing about it, well, it's, it's not amazing because they are an amazing group of ladies, but um, the thing that I shared with Lisa was that everybody had their point of view. Nobody was trying to um, get a person to the other side of their opinion. And so everybody um, was kind and um, civil and listened with respect to the other person's opinion. So that one 
just because it was a more polarizing subject um, sticks out to me. But we've had lots of very good discussions and lots of books where people came into the discussion not liking the book and ended wanting to read it again, just thinking that they might have missed something or they saw it in a different way. So. Thank you, Kate. Dana, did you have that happen in your discussions ever? Was there a book that was um, more memorable because it was life-changing to somebody or anyone in your group? Um, none that really pop out. I think all of our books have touched one of our members some way. And like Kay, um, our members are so respectful of each other that they will listen and they'll tell you if they didn't like the book and I just flat didn't finish that book because I just didn't like it. But they still give into the discussion. Our other members will be like, well, why didn't you? And so that helps make things a little more memorable as well because not everybody's going to like everything and but they're so respectful of each other that they will listen and give positive comments and chuck your conversation about just mercy was one that i remember for a long time tell tell me about that one or others if you want sure well just mercy is uh, a story about a, a black author who after graduating decided that he was going to move and his practice was helping uh, prisoners who are on death row. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that that really resonated with my group is because we live in a small town. We don't have the minorities that other community, larger communities might. I think that really opened the eyes of a lot of the people in my group about what it is like to be a minority, the things that they have to go through. Um, I think that was a book that, well, quite frankly, it was one that caused some of our members to cry because they had no idea these kinds of things were going on. And two other books that I can think of uh, that I think that really touched uh, uh, our members was a book called All the Gallant Men, the First Memoir of a U.S. As Arizona Survivor. It's a, a one book from Nebraska author, Donald Stratton, who is now deceased. But it really let our members know what really happened during Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And then I think a book that really I really enjoyed was called A Dirty Wicked Town. <laughs> and that uh, that really opened the, our eyes about what it was like to be in Omaha during yeah. the early part of the century. And I, I remember, I don't know if you remember, but I, when I sent you an email about the book, I said, Omaha might be a dirty, wicked town, but Lincoln isn't such a saint either. <laughs> so those are three books that I think that uh, really made a difference in the lives of my members. Is that David Haskins? Is uh, that the author? Let's see. It's okay. David Bristow. David Bristow. Okay. Yes, uh -huh. yeah. We have some smaller press, Nebraska-specific titles in our collection that I'm always happy to see them go out. Um, not many people have borrowed that title. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, it's a really eye-opening book to really what happened. Um, we're getting close. Do we have any questions, Krista? Everything going okay? I... Mm -hmm. um, no, no, no left, no hanging questions at the moment. Um, then, but yeah, said we still have about a little over five minutes left for... Okay. Um, I have two more things uh, I'd like. Just, yeah. Two more things I wanted to touch on. Um, we are all readers. But I want to talk about why individual reading and group reading are such very different experiences. And as librarians and as a person who now manages this book club collection, it's a book for a book club is maybe a different book as a singular reader. You know, not uh, any book can be discussed, but I'm wondering how does reading and talking about books really enhance that book experience? And how has that been for you all? maybe personally for you. And when you read a book now, do you think that wouldn't be great for a group or that would be great to discuss? Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead. I think the biggest thing is that when you read a book, you read it through your own eyes, mm -hmm. through your own experiences. But when you get together in a book club, then you get to hear everybody's experience and it makes the book more exciting, more fun to read. Uh, some people can book, 
pick out things that I, I didn't see in the book at all. And that's what's great about a book club is that it gives you a totally different view than you might have just by reading it by yourself. Exactly. I agree. Kay, Dana, any comments about reading individually and reading as a group? One of my favorite things that happens in book club is when somebody co comes with lots of sticky notes in the book, <laughs> passages from different things that affected them. And so often the same passage will have affected more than one person in the room. And so that's just a, such a wonderful way to read a book um, and to experience a book. So that's probably one of my favorite things that happens. Dana, how about you? I have to agree with Kay. I love when they come in and they'll tell you what page and what paragraph, almost down to how many words over. It. It's mm -hmm. just, and how it affects people differently. Somebody mm -hmm. will say, well, I didn't get that. And so they'll all be looking and someone will read it out loud and go, oh, I understand where you got that. I just love that interaction with the pay, with you know our members. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, I, one of the things I never ask in my book club, I don't know why, but I never say, did you like it? I, I, I think that's not really part of the discussion so much as I will say, do, would you recommend it? Would you, is this something? But how, have you ever had someone say, I really did not care for that book, but I really enjoyed the discussion. I think one of you alluded to that earlier. Has, yeah, Dana, that's happened to you. Has that happened in your group, Kay, where the book was a washout, but you created a great experience for them? It's happened to me. It's happened to me. I've gone to a book discussion and thought, oh, this was the most horrible book. Why did this get picked? And um, come and I listen to their discussion and I come away with the idea that oh, maybe I need to give that a second shot. So, so yes, absolutely that happens. How about in your group, Chuck? um yeah i think so i mean i think i think that uh, sometimes people say they don't like the book but after the discussion they see things that they didn't see before and mm -hmm. so they end up uh, really liking the book so yeah probably the one of the most depressing books that i ever read was the children's blizzard <laughs> that gets borrowed so much from our collection <laughs> which kind of surprises me because when i read it i thought i i really I was depressed after I was done, but every book affects people differently. So yeah, but yeah, I think I think really having the discussion is a big part of having the book club, right? So which is why th this was important for me to you all to for you all to share how you continue to do that in these circumstances. Um, so given that you all put in, this is my last question, unless there's others, Krista, um, you all really do a lot. I know what it takes to pick. I know what it takes to hand out, come up with questions. You come up with your own questions. As library programming goes, I want you all to talk to, how, ha, how do you feel about book clubs? Will it always be a part of your life? Has it been worth it for you? Are there some days you'd like to chuck this? <laughs> throw that out as a program. Um, how are you feeling about book clubs now? <clears throat> and how does it fit into your library programming? Clearly it's a priority, but um, is it worth the cost for you, I guess, is what I'm asking. Worth the hours, the money, the effort that you put into it. Kay, how do you feel about that for your group? It is absolutely worth the cost. Um, it is just such an amazing group of people that I get to visit with once a month. And um, we get to talk about books, which is something that you don't get to do a lot in regular life. And so um, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Dana, how about you? Oh, definitely worth the cost. Um, just to be able to interact a little more personally with our members mm -hmm. is enlightening. You learn a lot from them. And I think book clubs should be around, will be around for years to come. And Chuck? Yeah, I, I totally agree with what Dana and Kay have said that book clubs are, I think, a very important part of any library. Mm -hmm. And to suggest that someday there may not be book clubs is just, I think it's just a total lie. 
<laughs> I think as long as there are people who like to read books, who like to get together and talk, that there'll always be a book club. It's a special person who joins a book club because you agree to read books that you wouldn't normally pick for yourself, and you agree to respectfully talk about a book that I have one coming up this Thursday that I can't wait to be done with. I I loathe it. And I expect the club to turn it around, but I'm waiting to see how that metamorphosis will happen. But we all choose we all choose to read books we would not read normally. And that makes already a good reader, I think, that we all you all seem to have in your clubs. So And and not only that, the person in the book club agrees to dedicate the time to reading the book. Right. When they could be doing other things. Right. So please keep sharing with me your stories. I hope you don't feel like I called you out <laughs> to be a part of this discussion. I think you've offered a lot to other groups who had to figure out how to navigate this last year also. And I appreciate what you all have done to make that, make your clubs continue to meet because it's clearly an important thing for your folks, for your group and for you. So thank you. Any other comments you all want to make? I just want to thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Any comments from you all, Dana? Okay. I just want to thank you personally, Lisa, for all your help because I think the hardest thing about book club is sometimes getting the copies back from the people that have them. <laughs> and so I do appreciate your kind patience with us sometimes. So thank you. Things happen. We have popular titles that are tough, tougher, like the one book, One Nebraska, that we reserve just back to back to back, and that can be so hard. But people are going to have trouble getting their books back. That's life. We'll make it happen. But thank you for saying that. Any other comments or questions? Or, and then I think we can wrap. Um, yes, we actually we do. Um, we have a question that did come in, and um, I'll just let everyone know it is 11.01 officially Central Time, but um, if anybody does have any questions to the audience you want to ask of any presenters or anything you want to share, um, we don't cut things off right at 11 o'clock here, so if you want to get your you know, typing in there so we can get those questions or comments out. Um, but the one question that did come in uh, was um, they want to know if you have any ideas on reaching senior book club members. I'm assuming they mean older. And I know well, one of you said you have members up to in, the, in their 80s already in your club, but any tips on reaching senior book club, book club members to get them more involved? Or how have you done it? Um, we didn't really target them, but we do have members up to the, our oldest member is 85 and she's been a loyal member for a number of years, but we didn't really target her. She just is an avid reader and she, she liked the titles. So I guess I don't have anything to, <laughs> to share. Mm -hmm. Dana, since you were online, did that preclude, preclude some age? groups from joining i'm guessing it did or it did okay. it did yeah okay um yeah. So there were those at some point then your senior readers who don't want to bother with technology will you work to get them back and re-recruit them um i try and send them emails and let them know what we're reading and that i will try and get them a print copy if they want we do have a locker system and we are getting ready to start reopening and bringing our book club back, so. So I'm thinking of my 87-year-old neighbor who reads voraciously. She has no email, so is that how do you how do you bridge that gap, then Dana? How would you? Well, then I would. Them? If they don't have the emails, then I would call them. Okay. Yeah. Zach, how about you? Do you recruit a certain age of reader? Do you try to? No. No. Uh, when I first started the book club, I had a list of people I thought might be interested, and I don't specifically recruit anyone now. I, I ask someone, you know, we're still having a book club, would you like to join? Mm -hmm. As far as the senior members, one thing that I've noticed is that uh, our senior uh, readers almost exclusively will only read a book that's large print. Mm -hmm. I can't get them to read books that aren't large print, so that affects our collection. Awesome. That's well, 
yeah. um, Laura in the audience has an answer for that person, their suggestion um, that pre-pandemic, our outreach team worked with nursing homes and assisted living facilities to host book clubs on location. Mm. Of course, during pandemic, you would not do that, but that is a tip for when things yeah. are vaccinated. I think that, that would be something to do. Um, I led a book club discussion in a retirement home for one book, one link in one year. Have you ever traveled and done a book club discussion, at, not during pandemic, but elsewhere, just as the book club leader? Have you done that, Kay, Dana? No, I have not, but that's another good idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and she says also seniors not in the nursing home or in assisted um, seniors that are not in the nursing home or assisted living facility, um, but not able to physically come to the library would join during as a conference call. So not, you know, that's the technology, we'll call it. They know I can call on a phone and talk to people. Um, so they set up a conference call type thing for people who are uh, homebound or whatever to join in rather than, <coughs> excuse me, figure out technology and email, just call in and you can hear all of us talking and you can talk too. Mm -hmm. But technology has been a barrier for them as you yeah. learn from Dana, yeah. Anything else to share or comment upon? I appreciate your time. Thanks for logging in and being with us. Thanks for being here. And um, thank you for continuing to share your stories with me. Please keep sharing your stories with me. <laughs> I will rat you out. I <laughs> okay, so you had all of our contact information. If anyone watching wanted to email and further discuss something with a presenter today, I think they'd be willing to answer more questions independently of this session if you'd like. So thank you. Keep your book clubs going and keep reading. Yeah. Um, and we will, I will also. Um, what we usually do when we put up the archives of this is we do um, share the slides as well. So um, if you weren't able to grab the info off of here, it will be available in, well, in the recording, of course, and then on the slides. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for being here today. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to, actually I should do this, switch over to, there we go, our website now. Um, so uh, thank you all, everyone for being here with us. Thank you, Lisa, Chuck, Kay, and Dana, of course, for um, doing this, and Lisa really for organizing this entire, <laughs> our entire session today. This is great. Um, as we said, you know, book clubs are very popular here, and we and I'm, actually it was good to hear that it seemed like even in the audience, everybody still got kept their book clubs going as well in one way or another. That. Um, just like all of you, everyone was trying to keep things going and is with as much normalcy of something still being there as possible. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, here on our Encompass Live website, if you uh, use your search engine of choice and just type in Encompass Live uh, to find our website. Uh, so far, that's the only thing called that on the internet. Nobody else is allowed to use that name. <laughs> Um, this is our main page. We have our upcoming shows and right underneath here, this is where the archive will be. The archive shows are here, the most recent ones at the top of the list. Uh, by the end of the day tomorrow, everything should be processed and available. Everybody who attended today and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know that the um, archive is, is ready. I'll have a link to the recording on our YouTube channel and a link to our slides. So you have all that information as well. Um, and while we're here, I'll show you, this is our full archives of the show. Um, let's see here. And you can search this uh, from here. You can see you search the whole, all archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want to. That is because this is the full archives of Encompass Live. I would mentioned during the show that we've been on for a long time. Uh, January 2009 was when we first um, broadcast our first show. So over 10 years worth of shows are on here. I'm not going to scroll all the way down because that'd be crazy. Um, so just pay attention if you are searching our archives for any topic that you want. Um, pay attention to the original broadcast date. Many of our shows will stand the test of time. Um, book review sessions like this one, discussion things may still be good, but certain shows, depending on their topic, technology may have changed, um, services and programs may no longer exist, uh, links may be broken to things um, that are out there, uh, 
just just pay attention to when it was originally broadcast and understand that's when this particular information was relayed. Um, but we will always keep our full archives here. We're librarians. We archive things and keep them out there for historical purposes. As long as we have somewhere to put them out, they'll always be here. Um, we do have also a Facebook page. You can see I've got a link here to it on our session pages, but here's our Facebook page. We post reminders as a reminder to log in today's show, um, information about when our previous show recordings were available, um, when new shows are coming up. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. You can, um, you'll get notified of when we're doing things. We also use the hashtag uh, NCUMP Live, little abbreviation on other social media, um, Twitter, Instagram, I'm not sure where else our people are doing it, but um, look for that. And you'll also find notifications there. Other than that, just keep an eye on our website for our upcoming shows. I've got some May dates in. I'm working on stuff for next week and into June and July. I've got things um, finalized and um, we'll get some those actual dis, uh, descriptions up on the, on the page here. So keep an eye on our website. And um, thank you, everybody, for being here. Hopefully we'll see you at a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you.